My name's Billy Hardin and... And um, I kind of give you a bit of history of where it started when my battles with PTSD began. When I was 19, I went on holiday to Malia in Crete. A typical like laddish holiday, my best friend was out drinking every day. Um, not really thinking about my health to be honest with you. So I was drinking in the sun, drinking no water, and just constantly drinking alcohol. And I remember going to my room one day, I was quite drunk, and I just sat on this, the edge of my bed, and the whole world just started slowing down and my hands started all like wrapping up and I went into like a seizure. Um, I was alone in my room again, it happened again, my body contorted and I went into like a spasm and I passed out. I woke up this time in a completely different state. Um, I was having a panic attack, but I now know what they are, but at the time I didn't know what a panic attack was, so I thought I was actually gonna die. I got rushed to hospital. They currently speak English, so they just put me on a drip, and I think they basically were saying I was dehydrated from drinking. I was just very young and naive at the time, and I managed to come home from being in hospital for a few days. I was literally just having panic attacks, about three panic attacks a day, and my mum was in the state. She thought I was gonna, I was gonna kill myself because I was that bad. So we went to the doctors and they prescribed me with um, antidepressants and they literally saved my life. They stopped me having panic attacks and I managed to suppress all their emotions and, and help me to go back to work. I saved up some money and I went traveling um, to Australia. Yeah, I went to Fraser Island and um, this excursion was in these jeeps and we were setting up camp for the first night. I remember sitting there, sitting up with the fire and someone come running. Billy said, this guy Patrick who we'd met, this German guy, said he's choking. He said like, you're the biggest fella here. You need to come and try and save him, mate. And I had to run across the top of the mound. I just see this guy like choking like badly, like wheezing and that. And I was like, so my instinct was to just grab him. And I was trying to do the Heineck maneuver and bearing in mind, I've never done anything like that in my life. So it was just kind of all natural instinct. And um, so I'm trying to save him. And there's a couple of girls there, like trained paramedics. And they said, look, they showed me, do it higher. So I'm doing it higher. And um, so, and then he turned to me literally and he pushed me away because the pain was too much. And I was thinking, shit, like, I'm a big guy. I'm being, a, I'm doing as much force as I can. It's not even doing anything. So it just kind of, the whole situation deteriorated. He just started uh, fitting on the floor. So we just sat on an island, basically, and it was like just watching someone die and waiting for a helicopter to come out. The ambulance got to us, but they couldn't do anything because they said that he needed a, uh, an operation to save him, to get it out of him, an incision. And I woke up that middle of that night from in the tent and I just woke up like, <gasps> like it was happening to me and I had another like panic attack. I come back home again, got a flight back home because I just couldn't cope. And um, th the year after that happened, I literally, my character changed. My whole persona changed. I become arrogant, I had a chip on my shoulder. I started getting into altercations and fights with people. I was just very fiery. I took a lot of cocaine and drinking. I got, I got involved in crime. I started doing things just carelessly. I didn't care really if I lived or died to be honest. I didn't give, I didn't give a shit. Something hit my body and I was like, something's not right with me. I just felt literally drained and I think it was anxiety, but I didn't know what it was. I thought it was um, physical. The next few years was just medications after medications, after therapists, after failed therapy. The symptoms were still severe. I was still waking up, you know, having night terrors. I didn't leave my room for like, sometimes months on end. I'd grow a massive beard and I was just an absolute um, state. I was a recluse. I kind of went through this, you know, um, there was so much poor treatment from the local services. All they was doing was misdiagnosing me with bipolar, panic disorder, being fearful of death, PTSD. By chance I met up with this therapist, um, it became apparent that going into the things I've been through, like Mali or in Australia and situations, that a lot of my problems were in childhood trauma. I had to deal with a lot of childhood trauma, like witnessing a lot of domestic violence and things, and all that stuff just come back in it. And I finally, like, you know, I was getting to the root of my problems. I just learned so many coping skills from this guy and it kind of, give me the power to kind of think, you know what, I want to start something myself and hence when Warriors Stand United come about. I see people posting things about mental health and Warriors, they're Warriors and I thought, 
Warriors stand united. Come to me, I thought, you know, warriors, you know, warriors stand united, we're together. We're like mental health warriors. We can say about lame people PTSD, but some people don't even know that they're, they have PTSD or that some of their problems can stem from childhood trauma. I set up the first group, I didn't really have the courage to kind of go forward with it. So the biggest step for me was finally admitting to myself that I can be myself, that I can be, admit that I'm sad, that I'm not ashamed to, that, that them traumas upset me, that I'm scared, I'm terrified of what I've seen. I put a post out there and one person got back to me and that was, that was Lewis West and that boy has come on board with me and he's helped take this, Warriors Stand United, he's helped me to pick this up and take it to an absolute other level. To be doing what we're doing now, setting up support groups, you know, prim primarily it's about men, but, but we had a call in for women. And I think me and Lewis's idea is that we want to, you know, we want to help people. Um, we don't want to ram it down people's throats. We just want to make people aware that this is there and that group will be running for people um, on a fortnightly basis for men and women whenever they need it. There's nothing wrong with being scared. There's nothing wrong with crying. There's nothing wrong with asking for help, you know? You come forward when you want to come forward, you know? As I said, no one's forcing people to, to speak up because I think what me and Lewis have established is that it's not always about speaking up because people are speaking up left, right and centre, but not a lot's changing. We're saying that we're offering a service where we're a bit more personable. We hear your voice, we, we will listen to you and we will try and give you the help that you need to move forwards and, you know, hopefully, um, conquer your demons.